this, um, this, I mean, the, the issue of immigration, do we have the right number of immigrants coming here? In the year to July, a record 69,000 people arrived. Uh, that sounds a lot. David Shearer, what do you think? Yeah, it's way too much. Um, look, we all, all, have, all have come here at some point in time, and we've got immigrants, families that we go back to. Where's your family from originally? My mum's from Scotland, uh, my, uh, most, mainly Scotland and Germany. But look, the bottom line is, is if, you, if you bring in people at the time when you can't cope with the infrastructure around them, where house prices are going through, if you turn the, you dial it back until you actually need it. And the second thing you do, you only bring in people who can contribute with the right skills. And we're bringing in labourers that are affecting our unemployed and driving down the price of labour in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, but they're filling jobs that other people might not be interested in doing. For example, you know, um, uh, 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 Leon Stallard, Director of Horticulture New Zealand, said these immigrants are doing some very, very important work in the, in the orchards. Yeah, but there's, uh, there's six, look, there were 6,500 labourers brought in and we've got 16,000 unemployed labourers in New Zealand. There, there, is a, there is an issue with some people and, 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 their, and their work ethic. I, I don't deny you that. You don't deny that? But, but right. you don't fix that by bringing in a lot more people and driving down the price of the hourly rate and making it less exciting for those and people And that is what's happening, isn't it? 69,000 people so is driving down that rate. What do you no, think about this? No, 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 no. no. Look, look, we've got less new permanent residents today than we did 10 years ago. Around 50,000 permanent new residents come in, and that hasn't changed no, for a decade. 70, 000, the, thing, the, thing 70, the thing that's changed, the thing that's changed, is this that is Kiwis record numbers. are true. Hickey no, your net the immigration first, it's, it's, is around Kiwis is not going away. This is the biggest net 70,000 people. If you net look, immigration okay, is so let's, 70, let's put people. a wall up and keep keep Kiwis out who want to come home. No, let's no, keep uh, skilled labourers and of those skilled are engineers out. Ten percent, and then we'll get our numbers down. So let's keep all let's the skilled the people facts. away. Okay, Julianne, what do you make of this? Well, the problem isn't immigrants per se. It's the national government's failure to manage it properly, and they really are failing to manage it properly. So we don't have enough infrastructure to deal with the sudden increase in population. We don't have a properly unionised workforce that can ensure that there's good wages and conditions. We have a mismatch in the people who are coming, and there are a lot of people coming on student visa or temporary work visas who are actually being exploited by employers here in New Zealand. So students, you're employed. talking about students. Well, and the students are possibly being extorted through these really dodgy um, English language schools, which aren't even really schools. So, so what, what would you do then? I mean, the main, uh, uh, the, the main jobs for work visas, hospitality, the food trade, engineering, would you re-gear that, David? Well, first of all, what you... By bringing in people who, who are taking those jobs out, it means that effectively the, the hourly rate sits on the, on the minimum wage. And frankly, people can't bring up their families on the minimum wage. So you would allow the, the wage to go up. What we're doing is allowing people to come in to take up those jobs and push the, 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 the wage down. And quite frankly, the 70,000 people a year net coming into New Zealand and Auckland, my city, just had their average house price go through a million, million dollars. Now that is outrageous. And immigration so how, is okay. driving house prices so, so, going so up. So what do you see as an Auckland MP? How do people cope with that? How are people coping with this? With, with the house prices yeah. going Well, basically, you've got 50% of those people who are buying and selling houses in Auckland are speculators for a start. So, so no, you're rolling your eyes, Alistair. I mean, do you take that seriously? Do you take this seriously? Have you guys taken the sort of immigration Look, if, seriously? No, they don't. That's it's the people, it's people, people are coming. You ask the answer. The answer is to come south. Come south. Come to the Warapa. Oh, come to Wellington. Yeah, yeah. Come to Gore. He talk about, he talk, about, talk, about, talk about average house prices. You can buy a place in Gore less than 200000 not a, That's not, a, that's not, less not less an answer. Than half that's, that's not, not, an answer. Answer. That's not a practical answer. Look, there are jobs it. in the Southland uh, industries, the dairy industry, and there's a high population of po Filipinos, for example. But the problem is labour mobility. People are not willing to move to get the work. All where right, Alistair okay. would like to have ankle bracelets on them all, so he sends them the all gore right, and they have enough, to stay David. there. That's enough. You've had enough. <laughs> Julia, what do, you, what do you make of that? Is, does that ring true? Is uh, that going to Gore, there are jobs there, moving? Go to Gore, young If man. we had proper regional development policy and investment in infrastructure and a, a proactive government approach to regional development, then we would expect more people to move to the regions. And so really all that's lacking here is a proactive government approach and it's stuff that only they can be responsible for. Providing infrastructure, providing the services and managing the flow of immigrants so that we don't have these peaks and troughs. You know, try to like manage it so it's at right. okay, let's a more go to Hayley, reasonable come back straight to you guys. line. Hayley. 
Yes, Tyrone, obviously you yourself immigrated here to New Zealand. Yeah. How long ago was that? I've been here for six years. And did you find it difficult? Uh, not really. Uh, sorry from the accent. Um, <laughs> everything else has been all right. Were people nice to you? Did you get accepted? Were you welcomed? Yeah, I was, I was very welcomed. I think because um, I'm a black American, so I'm seen as sort of not really American. So, <laughs> you know. so you're kind of friendly. <laughs> yeah, one of the good ones. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, so you were welcomed. Did you notice any other groups? Or have you actually noticed in the past year, as immigration's become a hot topic, that any other groups are getting targeted? Uh, well, as, as an immigrant, what I see most often is um, it sort of depends on what country you come from. So if you're from one of the good countries, the doors are open. And if you're not from one of the good countries, then um, things are a little bit harder. Which is a good country. Well, it appears as though um, any of the big high-tech con con countries. So if you come from England, where everybody has family, then everything is OK. If you come from the US, it's all right. Uh, if you come from, say, China, then it's a little harder for you because people have issues with Chinese immigration. Well, it's such a shame. And, like, why did you want to come here to New Zealand? <laughs> I came here because I wanted to do stuff that mattered. And all of my research put New Zealand above the U.S. in best places to live, highest quality of life. And it's, it's so small here that, really, you only need one person to tell you yes, and then you can go about the business of doing really good things. OK, so you came in here because we're small, it's easy to get stuff done. Are you worried that's going to change as our population goes up? <laughs> there are less than five million people here. <laughs> Fair enough, we're banging hey, um, on about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, very, very interesting. I mean, this is quite interesting. I mean, Julianne, you were... Hands up in the audience, just go... Pan, pan the audience. How many of you in the audience here tonight are immigrants who came to New Zealand? Hands up. Good question. That's like, Good. what, one person, two, two people, people, three, three four, four, five. Ten percent. Julianne. It's over here. And, Julianne. Uh, and, oh, and Ke Kevin Haig. Where did you come from? From England. Here's a question around the panel briefly. Touched uh, on it by, um, by, uh, by Tyrone. Does it make a difference if the immigrants are white? In come terms on, of on, how, they, how they fit in. Yeah. Oh, look, I think people who are, who are coming from countries where they don't speak English as their first language is a, uh, have, have a much tougher time. Certainly in, in my electorate, I, th those are the people that I see more than anybody else. But No, no, but be honest, do we really not want non-white people here? What do you reckon, Alistair? Oh, it shouldn't matter, but unfortunately it does. OK. In, in the Wairarapa? In the Wairapa, we have a very small immigrant population. All right, Julianne? Of course it shouldn't matter, and it won't matter in the future. I mean, California went through a similar situation where I grew up. Probably there were 40 different languages being spoken in my high school, um, you know, at least. And nobody cares now. Like, you, if you grow up with that, you don't even see um, racial categories as a thing, other than in some places they serve to inhibit people and limit their choices, and we need to do everything we can to ensure that that isn't the case, that they have every opportunity. I think there's a big difference between Auckland and the rest of the country. I mean, I think Auckland's the second most diverse country, uh, city in the world. Um, I think we have an extraordinary um, tolerance for each other um, that's not demonstrated in other countries. But you go out of Auckland and you go down, for example, to the South Island, it's you don't recognise New Zealand, and they don't recognise New Zealand when they come up and move around some of the. Uh, All right. So, uh, so one key thing before we move on: how will you? How next year? How will you deal with immigration? What will happen under 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 a, a Labour uh, Greens government? Will you adjust immigration to fit with the infrastructure and the skills you need? It's very simple. It's not difficult. It's just that this government has decided to keep the doors wide open, right. putting massive pressure on, on, on jobs and driving down wages. All right. Hey, look, stay with us. Uh, your thoughts on that at Backbenders TV. Uh, next up, uh, will New Zealand ever uh, become a republic? <laughs> 